I was born in 1996 when carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere was 361.38 parts per million. I'm now 17 years old, with 70 odd years ahead of me, and carbon dioxide levels have exceeded 400 parts per million. By the time I am 30, the average age of a first-time mother in New Zealand is projected to be 422.4 parts per million. That's 72.4 parts per million beyond the maximum safe limit set by NASA climate scientist, Dr. James Hansen. By the time my children are my age, it's projected to be 466 parts per million. But I don't even know why I told you that statistic, because I never see myself becoming a mother. I'm optimistic of a low-carbon future, but believe it's unfeasible to raise a child in a world where carbon levels are drastically rising. Overpopulation is resulting in large, sprawling cities, and the beaches that I swim at every day in the summertime are becoming too polluted with effluent runoff. But what I find even scarier is the rate in which our governments are ignoring climate change is becoming beyond frightening due to their loudly requited love for motorways, deep sea oil drilling and coal mines. It was only earlier this year, in July, when I was attending Youth Parliament, that I asked the Honourable Simon Bridges about the government's commitment to carbon emissions. And he said this, We have made a commitment to reduce carbon emissions by 50% by 2050. Only a couple of weeks after this, they, the government announced that they would reduce carbon emissions by only 5% below 1990 levels by 2020. These do nothing to ensure any kind of future for my generation or those following. It's imperative Aotearoa is 100% carbon neutral by 2050. Aotearoa has one of the most commendable track records for social movement. From women's suffrage in 1893 to the Springbok Tour in 1981, nuclear free in 1987, and most recently, marriage equality in 2013. We were never apathetic about such vital social issues. My generation is facing similar issues. Your children, your grandchildren. Climate change isn't just an environmental issue, despite the intense environmental impacts. It's not just a social issue, despite the intense social impacts. Climate change is the biggest humanitarian issue ever to face Earth, and you're ignoring it. So for the past six years, this is what I have been committed to. I am privileged to, be to belong to a family that knows the value of giving back to society. I vividly remember my first involvement in democracy when I protested down Queen Street in 2006 for GE Free New Zealand, or when my parents and I were among the couple of thousands of Aucklanders who stopped traffic and walked across the Harbour Bridge in 2009 to communicate the importance of pedestrian and cycle access across the harbour. I further developed my environmental and social conscience at intermediate school, where I was confronted by a provocative teacher 
who believed global warming was a weather pattern and not caused by humans at all. In response, I would return to school the following day with an argument, having come home and diligently set about researching my stance. At this time, I was passionate about minimizing waste and consumption. I would collect my friend's organic waste after lunch for composting at home, and I had committed to only buy New Zealand-made or second-hand clothing. In my first week, at Western Springs College, I read in the notices that the environmental prefects needed to go along to a meeting. And as a little year nine, I decided that I'd head along too. By the end of that year, in year nine, I had told the deputy principal we had to sort out the issue of waste at Western Springs College. Alongside my brother, and with my dad's strong support on the board of trustees, we proposed reducing the school's waste by 50%. By February 2013, following a $56,000 grant from the Ministry for the Environment and the development of a core waste minimization team, we have achieved a 73% waste reduction. I began then to get involved in the Auckland Council Make a Difference program with around 100 students each year from Auckland high schools. In 2011, I was very fortunate to speak on a panel with NASA climate scientist, Dr. James Hansen. What I found very empowering is that whilst he is working on very high-level climate policy, he vouched for grassroots action, for individuals like yourselves choosing to cycle over driving, or local groups opposing proposed coal mines in their rural New Zealand towns. In 2012, along with 29 other young Kiwis, I travelled to the Kermadec Islands, one of the last pristine ecosystems in the world. Immersed in 40 metre deep water, surrounded by Galapagos sharks, shoals of Kermadec Kahwai, and absorbed in the mellow ocean and the meditative roll of the swell, I was saddened to think that, that all of this will be destroyed if we don't change the way we live our lives. And the Lorax just sums it up so beautifully. I am now a part of the youth-led climate change organisation, Generation Zero, which unites over 4,000 young Kiwis determined to create a safe climate future. I have developed a series of four civic education workshops and have presented them to 40 staff and students at Western Springs College. In preparation for the general election in 2014, I am turning them into online workshops, so high school students across Aotearoa can watch them, because we are not being taught adequate civic education in the current school system. The aim of these workshops is to inform young people that being a part of a democracy does not only mean voting when you reach 18, it means engaging in politics during the three-year term on certain issues, and in this case, ones that matter to the prosperity of our generation. I want you to leave the Auckland Museum today feeling that providing a future for me, for your children, for your grandchildren, is more important than worrying about the value of your Auckland house. Please, please start investing your time in worrying and lobbying for issues that need urgent resolution. Our generation needs to hold our parents accountable. We shouldn't be left to clean up the mess. I want to be a mother. I want to rear my children in a fruitful and fertile world. One where Auckland does not extend from Wellington to Cape Reinga. One, where the beaches that I love can be the beaches where my children learn to swim. 
one, where the future generations are acknowledged by those governing at the time. One, where young couples do not have to feel guilty about procreating. Other young people around the globe are fighting for our generation's future because the one that you have created for us is crap. It is your responsibility as a human being to act. I say in all honesty, the grass really is a hell of a lot greener on our side of the fence. Kia ora, thank you. <laughs>